Just like exploring ideas, um, just using a bit of photos to kind of convey scale and whatnot, but that's not going to be like a fully moving matte painting shots. I would need a little bit more uh, 3D structure underneath it to make it move and all. So this is just a, a slightly quicker um, piece of concept art to explore terrains and whatnot. It's close to be a matte painting. There's a lot of similar techniques, but it's actually uh, more of a concept art in, in some fashion. It could be turned into a matte painting somewhat easily. I'm, I'm gonna skip that technical part to just propose this one as an idea or a concept art.
Yes, sir. Oh, great, man. I'm glad to hear that. I've uh, been keeping an eye on that model. It looks pretty good, Tanel.
shocking. This is not a test. Please stay calm. How do you know when to stop? <laughs> I like that. I like that question. Uh, well, it, that's an interesting question. I think if you're working on a production and uh, you're doing a movie shots, I think you want to stop when the stuff looks real and convincing and there's no loose ends. So an area like this, you know, if it was to be on a movie screen, would not would not work out because you see the brush strokes right so you would approach it slightly different way if you're doing a piece of concept art as long as from back here the whole idea is kind of clear then the purpose is done for that painting right now i'm doing this as a personal piece so i'm kind of practicing and kind of trying to see where i can improve so i don't have a stopping point in mind uh, unless perhaps when when i feel satisfied or when my eye doesn't see any things that I would like to fix or whatever so um, I could noodle or whatever but if not uh, try to stay within budget how do I go over a creative block okay this is a super good question and I have a very clear answer for you it's inspiration so i'm going to show you how to get inspired uh, or at least how i get inspired so i have a tumblr account uh, here that is called uh, Bruby films or Bruby rather on tumblr and if i go on the tumblr page my Bruby account here and then i go to archive I have a pretty uh, heavy stack of reference images or art of any type, graphic design, photography, fashion, and anything that inspires me. And sometimes I'll kind of get ideas from that, or if anything, I'm just going to get inspired because this is the stuff that I really enjoy. So. After viewing a couple images, I feel like I'm, I'm going to be recharged and back in the groove, you know, like I look at things like this. It's like, man, this is cool. This is like that cyberpunk video game that's super inspiring. Or if I'm doing more of an environment piece, you know, I'm going to look at something like this. I'm like, wow, that scale is amazing. That haze is amazing. Let me see if I can uh, implement some of those ideas into here. And the goal is inspiration is to look at images that will give you ideas and ideas is what you need to get over your creative block so don't be hard on yourself um, don't be too hard on yourself don't panic um, keep it cool keep it keep it fun and creative and that's the purpose of the job right it should be fun and it should be creative and just uh, either follow people that inspires you or uh, put a blog of your own and I got all sorts of fun stuff in there, whether it be for colors and photography or uh, design or even like fashion design like this. How cool of a color palette is that? That could be my next character or whatever. Um, film shots sometimes is just color palettes as a whole. Um, here you go, what the, whatever that is, that looks pretty cool too. There's some concept art from um other people that are quite good as well and that just inspires me to keep on going and so that's how i go over that how often do i use ptex texturing um hmm. okay so ptex texturing is per face texturing as opposed to doing uvs um it depends for concept art it could be good because you don't want to spend the time to do the uvs uh, but if you have the UVs, um, 
it's a little bit easier because if you have nicely unwrapped UVs for your model, you can actually bring the flat texture in Photoshop and paint on top with overlays and other sort of blending modes and whatnot. But if you do PTEX, your, your texture file is going to look like a, thousands of small little confettis. So it's a, it's a lot harder to modify afterwards in Photoshop. So I prefer uh, regular UVs uh, and perhaps PTEX for concept art. See if I can make that whole uh, waterfall thing here going on. Let me see here. Make sure I don't lose too much of my contrast up there. So guys, if I if I don't answer your stuff right away, it's uh, only because I'm looking at my screen <laughs> and uh, the phone is a little bit uh, away from my uh, eyesight. So it's a little bit harder for me to do both at the same time. Um, and by the way, um, I'm, I've actually started to uh, stream on uh, YouTube. So uh, if you guys are interested in that or if you are at work or anything, um, I'll have a much higher resolution on my YouTube channel here. And then you can punch in question in the chat. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a better platform for us to, uh, to do more in-depth kind of streaming uh, exercises. And if you Google uh, Jonathan Baruby on uh, YouTube, um, you should uh, find me easily and you'll see my live sessions over there. So if you're at work, that might be better. What is the resolution of the image you're working on? Seems big. Yes, it is big. Um, and it's often this is a really good question and I'm going to show you exactly why I do it right here in a very simple uh, exercise. So um, I got all sorts of things open. Okay, I'm going to make a new image and I'm going to say I'm going to make it 10,024 by 512. Uh, the resolution right here in DPI, uh, if Unless you're intending to print your work, uh, you can leave this one to 72. This is your uh, per inch, uh, per pixel, pixel per inch uh, definition on a screen monitor. So solved by 1024 pixels. Uh, so that's a rather small image. And I'm going to show you what the difference is. So I got this texture brush right here. So let me do like a black and white image. I'll be easier to see. Okay. So you can see that when I paint, it's really, really fast, right? So it's very fluid and that's good. You want that. But here's the catch is you see the texture right here in my brush is very pixelated because I don't have enough resolution for my, my pastel brush to really take effect. Whereas if I was to make a new one and I'm going to say, I'm going to make it 512 by, you know, 2048. And there we go. I'm going to fill that with white and look at how small my brush is now. You can barely see it. But now if I do this, it's a lot more detailed in the, in the brush itself. You see that? So if you're trying to convey certain textures and a certain scale, it's especially for scale. You know, if you're painting a street and it's very far away, whatever, and then up close, you know, you got this detail and then back here, it's all the, the noise is getting all very fine. The resolution is going to help you do that um, at the cost of speed, depending on your configuration with hardware and whatnot. But that's kind of why I paint high. So to go back to your question more directly, the resolution of this image is 14,000 pixel wide by 7,400 high, which is pretty damn high. Uh, it's a little bit more like movie work, uh, matte painting work, you know, um, so I can really get in there and kind of, you know, figure everything out. And once I zoom out or scale it out, it's going to look really sharp and really real. Uh, hopefully that answers your, uh, your question on the, the image itself and then why I'm doing it. 
All right, let's go back to these waterfalls right here real quick. Let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, let's see. So I think I'm going to apply the mask. And I think I'm going to cut into it and move stuff around. Okay, let's see. I'm happy with the part up here, but I think this down here, I think I'm going to try maybe something like this. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. <clears throat> I think I broke the image a little bit over here. I'm gonna. Okay, cool. Happy to hear. All right. Let's see here. This is the smudge brush right here, by the way, which is super rad. It's a hard, hard smudge, a hundred percent. So I can push and pull pixels around and it's really cool it does like almost like a minecraft look uh, but it's an easy way to kind of stretch elements and keep detail and do it kind of quickly and then if i come back and erase in it with a texture brush um, i can kind of quickly you know get an effect of uh, somewhat looking like textures and yeah that's pretty good good enough i'd say all right, trying to get rid of this hard edge right here that came from my uh, lasso selection, which is not really good. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Nice. All right, that's better. That looks super crazy over here. That's weird. Oh, that's a leaf. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, let me see here. All right, I think I'm gonna trash all that. Uh oh, yeah, no, that's right. I'm gonna trash all that and erase over here. Let's see. Let's see if any of this makes sense at all. I think I'm going to move this area over here too. Actually, I'm going to cut it. There we go. Those shadows right here, they look simple, but they're important for the bigger read, I think. I'm going to try to preserve some of those. That's kind of off on its own. All right, so I got one more piece of waterfall right here. Let's see if I can put that anywhere. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe like something like that. All right, let's see. It's a little roughy, 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 but it doesn't matter. Let me check if the idea is even good to start with. Let's see. That's not bad, something like that. That's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna lose that. There you go. Yep. All right. And here's a fun little trick. Come in on my detail layer right here. And I think with a bright color, I should be able to paint like a little bit of a, a little bit of an edge, edge lighting sort of thing that's going to help us out understand the, the shape or either like a bump in the rolling hills or whatever that's kind of occluding the waterfall or something like that so the lighting is picking up the edges and it's nothing fancy it's just a little textured brush um, it's uh, let me see here 2048 by it's uh, this brush right here so I'm just kind of going around and give it like a little little edge and there you go rim lighting boom there's just enough texture in it to fool the eye, at least from a distance, you know. There you go. 
it's kind of what it's all about really just fool the eye you want the brain to think it's real or okay a little bit over here All right, let's see. Hmm, what else is cool? Gonna hit off the waterfall a little bit to sort out the, sort out that water flow a little bit. I think it's gonna help a little bit here, like that. Here, goes down here. Here. There you go. Just a few more confident line to help understand what's the water coming from and going to. Someone that kind of follows the shape of the terrain a little bit so that the flow kind of makes sense sort of thing. That's not bad. Maybe this thing back here could flow somewhere. Like that Sometime one of those like loner lines right here, kind of cool. Really help the scale. Make sure that the white is a little bit warmer when it's been hit by the sunlight and a little bit cooler when it's in the shade. There you go. Oh, that'll be fun right here. A few dripping little finer lines. There you go. All right, now I need to sort out this whole area right here. Let's see, what am I gonna do with that? Hmm, I think I'm actually gonna occlude it. Where is it? There you go, I think I'm gonna hide it. Funny enough, let's see, let's get rid of all that. So then it goes behind the little rolling hill there. There you go. That works. And now we can do a little bit of a kind of a smoke sort of misty looking thing here. Let's see. All right. Something like that. And a little bit more mist like that. And probably occlude it and paint it warmer at the top so it feels to be hit by the sun or something and then i can erase my grass hill here so it's behind it there you go Okay, back to this area right here. Let's see. Which one is that? This guy. Let me see here. Let's see what else we got. Uh, mm -mm. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look how big the, the smoke plume is on that one. Wow, it's massive. Oh, wow. 
over there too. It's quite misty up there. Hmm. Good to know. I think I'm being too conservative with the mist aspect. All right, all right. That's cool. Oh, I think that's a good one right here. Let's see. Hmm, it's a little damage. What about this? Yeah, that one's great. All right. Let's do that. All right, so I think... I think I'm gonna lose this. And paste a whole new one. All right, so let's mask out some of the... Some of the stuff here, there we go. Aha. Mask out some of that foreground. Might be able to make it a little bit bigger, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. That's actually pretty cool here, that little crevice. That's actually really fun. I think I'm gonna keep that feature somehow. Oh yeah. Let's see. So this one, I can't do that one because I already have it over there. So I don't want to repeat that motif. Let's see. I keep moving that one around a little bit. Okay, I think could make this a little valley thing here like that let's see let's see what else I need to fix the contrast a little bit so my my blacks over here are way darker than this so <clears throat> let me see if I can fix this real quick so that would be these guys And I need a lot more blue back there, down there, and these tones right here. So it's going to be the bottom portion of it only. Let's see. That is not bad, but not super good either. Let's try that again with maybe the levels. Let's see, something like that. And then let's see our tones here. Okay, it's a little too dark. I'm gonna fade that back a little bit. Yeah, it's more like that. There we go. So now the blacks or the shadows over here and over there are a little closer to one another. Yeah, no, this is not for Avatar here. This is just personal stuff. Personal concept art. Actually, I, I started this piece quite a long time ago, actually. So it's just that classic sort of fantasy landscape, grass and hill. It's actually more Star Wars than anything else. All right, let's see. That's a little closer, see? a little closer. I'm gonna fade that backward just a tiny bit, but yeah, there we go. Okay, that's better. All right, so now let's try to clean this up a little bit. It's a little bit messy up here. So let's get rid of all this noise, all that dust, and let's see here. Oop. It's 
something cool about this little pocket back here. I think I have an idea on how to do with that. I think I'm going to fog it behind it, but I'm going to clean up its edge first. So then I'll get like a super stark contrast. There's the grass right here. Uh huh, uh huh. See if I can save that tree right here. I actually really dig the ideas of the trees. It totally adds a whole new layer of vegetation because I only have the grass and the moss right now and having a little bit of foliage really helps with the scale too. So I think I'm gonna go plant a couple of trees once I get this figured out here. It's always a good tool for scale. Trees, like we're all familiar with trees and how big they are and with the leaves, with the repetition, it's very easy to design scale with that. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna lose all this right here. Let me go check out the mask real quick. It's probably so messy. Yep. <laughs> and by the way, uh, for those of you who uh, recently joined, uh, if you're at work or anything or by your desk or whatever, uh, you may want uh, you may be interested in uh, catching me on YouTube right here. I got a live stream uh, going on on YouTube. Um, it's like uh, 3K, I think, so it's much better resolution. If you're on the computer, you you might uh, you might get more out of that than the IG feed. But if you're on the road or you're waiting somewhere at the DMV, IG is pretty cool. All right, let's clean this up. Oop. There you go. Cool. All right, let's see. I think these guys right here are a little crazy. So I don't think there's any water kind of justifying that. So I think I'm going to lose these guys. Let's see. Let's see what's behind that. Uh, let's see, maybe something like that. It's a good kind of in between. No, the trees were kind of cool. Hmm. Because the water has to come from somewhere, right? <laughs> All right, let's see. So I think, I think I'm gonna make the water fall behind that crevice right here. That's gonna make my life a little easier. I think I'm gonna bridge that gap right here. Burn like that. Let's see. And I think I lost my little valley that I thought was awesome. That was here. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that thing is really fun. Save that cliff. Okay. All right, all right. Yep, that's great. Whoop. Let me see here. What do I want? Do I want the fog or the grass? Maybe something like this. Haze this up. And we just saw how, how much mist those waterfalls are creating. So I'm going to steal from that idea and uh, do a little bit of that right here. So now, is it in the sun or in the shade? So if it's in the sun, the mist can be pretty bright and pretty warm. But if it's in the shade, I'm going to go with a cooler mist because it's in the shade. And uh, 
somewhat something in between can also add a little bit of noise learning the secrets yes that's right and by the way you guys uh, if you're that's just me painting on the weekend for fun streaming it might as well but if you guys are more like directly interested in learning a little bit more in depth the the techniques and stuff like i have these uh breakdowns right here on the patreon um and these these uh, patreon classes i go on the full detail of every single painting that i do i ex i explicate every techniques and whatnot and if you've missed some of the episodes, uh, you can uh, always buy the um, other episodes, past episodes on the Gumroad um, right here. Um, if you do a search for Jonathan Bruby Gumroad, let me see here. There you go, Bruby on Gumroad. You're going to find some of the older um, classes, whatever. And they're pretty long. You'll, you'll get... Uh, a good bank for your money. I give you a lot of tricks over there. I take the time to do them thoroughly. All right, so where were we? Let's see. All right, so a little bit more mist here. A little brighter, maybe. Cool. Let's see what that looks like. It's a little strong. Trying to break that up with a little bit of a noise or something. I try to use the airbrush less and less because there's no texture in it. There's no detail in it. It's not. It's not really fun. You're you're better off to try to paint those subtle grads with, you know, a brush that has a little bit of a noise in it or, you know, like this mixed with that is gonna be. A lot more fun than this right here right look how synthetic that is that's fun and textured so I usually recommend mix a couple brushes together you know to do the good smoke you know like try you know some like this and then you can mix up a couple of hairs in it and then a different style of hair and then let me see here a little bit of a noise like that and you can also smudge it together with like a little bit of a smudge noise you know whatever but that's going to be a lot more interesting than just a regular airbrush and this is something i've learned from craig mullen so if you don't take it from me take it from him because he's a g that guy is amazing all right i'm going to blur that edge a little bit it's just a little sharp for how misty this is just gonna blur that up a little bit so it doesn't look so much like a cutout all right I think I'm about to be done with this it's pretty cool like that all right I think that's good enough for now now let's work on this crevice right here let's see all right this guy right here so I need to be painting out let's see I'm gonna try to there we go that's what I want gone done all right let's uh, let's check out our mask aha uh -huh. all right now I'm gonna bring it back see so by the way if you're if you're kind of entry level as opposed to paint I'm gonna cover something super basic but hopefully some of you will appreciate it so if you paint something like this on a new layer and you erase you can't come back those pixels are gone forever but if you create a mask here which is this little button down here and you paint black you erase but if you paint white you bring it back you see that erase bring it back and this is super awesome because if I was to use the regular eraser once I erase it 
I can't bring it back. I'll have to repaint. So if you're trying to make a specific pattern, like a star or whatever, now if I erase in a mask, I can bring back the star every time. No matter how many times I erase, I can always bring it back. So you paint with white, you erase with painting black. Right here by switching the colors in your mask. And that's kind of what the whoops. That's kind of what the mask looks like. So you either paint black or you paint white. So when you see me erasing this waterfall right here like that, but yet I'm able to bring it back and then erase again and bring it back. That's because I'm using a mask. And that's super awesome because well, you got to give yourself a chance, you know, it's not like you're going to nail it the first time, the first brush stroke. So the mask is a good system to kind of come back to, you know, either fix your edges or whatever it is. So see right now I fixed my line. I'm going to take a little bit of an airbrush, bring back some of the tones that I had back there. Uh, undo that. All right. All right. Let's see what that looks like. I really like that part, it's pretty cool. That looks super rough right here. This whole center area totally needs some help. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep focusing on what I'm focusing on. Once you go to Mari, you don't want to use other texturing UDIMs very well. Uh, hmm. Mari is awesome. I would definitely do good UVs on your model. And then um, Mari, take shaders per shaders, layers by layers. You're going to get some great results out of that. Um, I would definitely advise to use Mari. Substance Painter is also really, really good. Uh, it's a slightly different kind of um, mentality. It's more like fractals and procedural shaders than painted maps. Uh, if you're painting like projecting like a face, I think you know it'd be easier in Mari. But I'm not like super averse in uh, Substance Painter yet. I uh, played with it a tiny little bit. Um, all right, all right, all right. What else? What else is cool? Let's see. Uh, all right, these trees right here are definitely crazy. So I'm gonna lose all that. But I think I'm gonna bring some well I don't know let's see is there something I like about it but there let me see if the scale is right and some other waterfalls back here oh boy okay let's see uh, hmm yeah I think I'm gonna lose the trees here but I think I'm gonna paint in some other trees because I, I like the idea, I like the scale, I like the placement, but there's something about it that's just not quite right. I think I'm going to lose this too. Oh, voila, much better. There you go. I got lucky there. That's something underneath already that was pretty, pretty bomb. Nope, that's not right. And maybe I can use this black contrast right here. It's kind of fun, little plateau helps me with my perspective all right and now let's get in old school painting I'm gonna kind of um, pick my bright color right here and I'm just gonna punch out some of that ledge right here because I think it's gonna help kind of define the form of it all there you go and then maybe it can creep up that little valley here Something like that, and punch out the top right here. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so I think this is helping over there, not so much. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Let's see. Okay, that's cool. Like that. Uh huh. Oh, like that might be able to piggyback that same brush stroke on top of these rocks right here to kind of connect the hole. It's always a good, uh, good idea. Have everything meshed together. 
I like that little light pool there. That's kind of fun. It's like this little bits of grass that's being hit by the light. Something like that. That's pretty cool. You know, you see me painting with that texture brush again. Here's a good trick. You can paint with a texture brush and then you can erase with another different texture. So I like this hair like brush right here. It's pretty cool. Uh huh. That's pretty cool. All right. And then smooth that out a little bit. We don't want that hard edge to. There you go. It's coming together. Pom pom pom. All right. Micro composition time. Ah, snap. I had a kind of a lucky brush stroke there. I lost it. Nope. <laughs> it's amazing how just a few lines can totally make it look right or make it look wrong. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's punch that out a little bit. That little edge just to connect the lighting so it's all the same everywhere. Yep, that totally helped. I think over here I'm going to punch the darker tones against my uh, against my fumes. And that's going to help me kind of silhouette that little cliff right here. Just to help out the reed. Let's see. Yep, there you go. And it totally looks more detailed too, but it's just actually just a bunch of gibberish but totally helps just because it's the shadow tone yeah there you go just like that boom 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 okay let's see if there's some uh, other kind of big picture item I need to address there's so much work in this piece okay this waterfall right here is not working it needs to be a little bit more reconciled into a more of a logical flow here so i think i'm going to make it come from over here let's do some white bits boom 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 something like that yep 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 okay and then it comes in and fall down here Up. I think I'm going to erase the other bits next to it because they just don't make much sense. So I like those hairline looking mist. Like the water just dissipates with the height as it falls down because it catches in the wind or whatever. It's always fun. All right, let's see. So water comes in, boom, boom, boom. They all converge down that V-shape and down here. Okay. All right. Something like that. That's not bad. It's a little surreal looking, but it's not bad. 
God damn it. Now I have to figure it out down here too. <laughs> Alright, let's get rid of these right here. I don't think they uh I don't think they're suited there. Let's see. Waterfalls. Uh let's see. Yep, that's the one. Gonna erase all this noise up here. Let's see. Lose all that. And then uh, lose all this noise. I think I lose that too. Oh snap, I'm gonna keep that one. Okay, so now am I gonna lose this one? Let's see it. Let's try it. Let's see. What does it look like if this is gone? Yep, I don't miss it. Perfect. All right. Okay. I think I can lose that. All right. So this right here is gonna be interesting. I think I need a couple more angel hair here. Okay, that's not bad, but the color is definitely wrong. There we go. There it is. All right. I might be able to do that little uh, trick again with the smoke up here. Somewhat of a small, and definitely in this crevice. Anywhere that suggests a little bit more height for the water to fall could justify um, a little bit of a mist like that. Let's try to put a little bit of texture in it or like a motif. There you go. Done. All right. So there's that. The only thing is it should be a lot brighter because the sun is like hitting it hard. So I'm going to come in with the airbrush or this perhaps and toast it up a little bit. Let's see. All right, there we go. We're done with that. All right, and then now All right, so I'm gonna go get a bite and I will uh, continue a little bit later. Uh, so thanks for watching and um, I hope that you are getting inspired and learning and I hope that this will help you out with your career and I hope you're all having a good time watching it and uh, make sure to subscribe, post comments below, question and I'll uh, try to do my best to uh, answer them. And I will see you in the next broadcast.